I went through 10 years, five medication cycles, five IUIs, four endometriosis surgeries, six egg retrievals, three fresh embryo transfers, and three frozen embryo transfers to get my two miracle babies. My name is Alan Ann, and I am a miraculous mama. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Miraculous Mamas podcast. I'm your host, Elizabeth Joy, and we believe in empowering women through storytelling and education. And if you didn't listen to last week's episode, we had the budget mom on and she shared tons of amazing tips and tricks to save money and to um, be, be financially free, break down your financial goals. And it was such a great conversation. We're going to tap into saving money a little bit this week because our guest is Monet Hambrick, and she's going to teach us how to travel as a family and with kids. How many of you said, I'm going to keep traveling when I have kids, and then you had them and you stopped because it's really hard. And she and her husband take their two daughters all over the world and they do it on a budget. They do it cost effectively. They've done it since they were kids. So she's going to talk to us about time zone changes and sleep and all sorts of stuff like that. The top mistakes that parents make um, and even how to schedule it with your child's school year. So she has a lot for us. Before we get into that, we are going over things to either add to our birth plan or just education if you are giving birth anytime soon. Last week, we talked about group B strep and there was some tips and tricks in there as well. Um, Some research and studies done to show how to potentially prevent it. Um, And that even though you may test positive, it doesn't mean that you have an infection, but uh, you still will most likely have to be on antibiotics. So we touched on a bunch of different stuff with group B strep last week. And this week we're going to talk about something that is in my birth plan that I added to it, and that is delayed bath. So a lot of um, people, it's been kind of a part of our old culture is to bathe the baby right away or to rub all of the vernix off, that white coating when the baby comes out. Uh, But the Vernix has so many benefits and actually takes up to five to six days to fully absorb into your baby's skin. So we're going to talk about what Vernix is and why you should delay your child's bath. Um, Not necessarily should, but consider it. Uh, So Vernix caseosa, it's a white, creamy, naturally occurring biofilm that's covering the skin of the fetus during the last trimester of pregnancy. Um, it's there to protect the newborn skin. It it facilitates extra uterine adaption uh, of skin in the first postnatal week if it's not washed away after birth. It mostly consists of water, but also has amazing other nutrients in it. Um, It performs various integral, integral roles during the transition of the fetus from intrauterine to extrauterine life. Um, I'm going to put up a research article that I found that has some super interesting um, facts and statistics and research about Vernix. I'm also going to read to you a little bit from The Natural Mama. Um, I love the way that she kind of wrote everything out. Uh, There's about 61% of the proteins found in Vernix can only be found in Vernix. And humans are the only ones that produce it, which makes it super unique. Um, And the benefits of leaving it on. So it is a germ fighting superhero. One of the primary purposes of Vernix is to protect the infant from unwanted pathogens, both in the womb and out of it. Uh, So when you're pregnant, your mucus plug and your amniotic sac both help protect the baby from harmful bacteria. But the Vernix is truly the last line of defense of anything penetrating that. Um, It's a skin cleanser and antioxidant. It also offers protective covering while going through the birth canal. And this allows baby to pick up good bacteria as well as potentially avoid outgrowths of bad bacteria, viruses, and fungi, including E. coli, group B strep, um, and candida, listeria, all sorts of stuff. The list goes on and on. And I'm going to attach this research and article also in the show notes. Um, It protects from meconium exposure, controls temperature, 
Uh, it minimizes birth trauma. It helps kind of smooth that passage from for the baby coming out of the vaginal canal. Uh, it helps establish a breastfeeding connection. And after the baby is born, it moisturizes and keeps the skin soft. Uh, it contains that new baby smell to help mom and baby bond for breastfeeding. Decreases skin pH and helps to form the protective acid mantle. And one of the reasons why nurses might rub it off right away is because it kind of looks gross. There's some babies that come out super white and they have a thick layer of vernix on it. And hospital policies developed out of our germaphobic culture. Old school nurses were taught that vernix was a biohazard and needed to be rubbed off to avoid germ exposure, but it's actually quite opposite. It is in nature antibacterial and antimicrobial. Uh, If necessary, blood, amniotic fluid, and other vaginal secretions can be gently wiped off the baby without disturbing the vernix very much. Briskly washing and drying the newborn used to be thought to stimulate proper breathing in the baby. Even though American hospitals have held on to a lot of outdated practices, removing the vernix isn't necessary at all. Professional groups like the World Health Organization and the National Association of Neonatal Nursing actually recommend leaving it on because it has so many benefits for your baby and for you as well. Um, And the recommendation then to allow your baby to be able to absorb this vernix is to delay the bath at least 24 hours. The majority of it is absorbed within the first day, but it won't fully absorb until day five or six. So it could be best to wait until then. Um, And since it has this protective layer in it, bathing isn't necessary for your baby in that those first five or six days. Um, In the meantime, you can just easily wipe off any spit up, baby poo, or other messes with warm water and maybe some mild soap. So those are the benefits of leaving the vernix on. It has, your baby's born with it for a reason and it has so many added benefits to keeping it in place and just kind of rubbing it in. Uh, So this is why I, Vito and I have chosen to add delayed bath to our birth plan. Um, We we don't want the bath given at the hospital within the first 24 hours that we're there. We're going to wait until we bring the baby home and just kind of play it by ear for the first week and see how it goes. Um, Also, again, like a super mild soap, but even before that, just using warm water on your baby is more than enough. But uh, I will be posting some resources on um, those first tips and tricks for baby bathing as well. So this has been fun. Uh, We also... I think next week are going to be talking about placenta encapsulation uh, before we have our interview on. I interviewed an amazing placenta encapsulator and she is just so full of energy and fun and it's something that I've chosen to do and we are going to be gifting it to one of our listeners. So make sure that you are listening next week to find out more details about that. We are going to take a quick break to talk about how as a new parent, it's really overwhelming because there's so many stresses having a new baby. Uh, And a big one is, are they sleeping enough? And when I heard about Lumi by Pampers baby monitoring system, I was super intrigued because Lumi by Pampers combines an HD video monitor with a sleep sensor that automatically tracks baby's sleep 24-7. And from the app, you can see the baby super clearly, even when you zoom in at night. You can track their naps and sleep, and it visualizes it in a way that's easy to see how their routine is forming. The personalized insights will help you create a more consistent sleep schedule. And the more sleep your baby gets, that means the more sleep that you are going to get. So no wonder it is award winning. And you can try Lumi by Pampers for 20% off by going to lumibypampers.com and using code MIRACULOUS20. That's L-U-M-I by Pampers.com and using code MIRACULOUS20. Also, do me a quick favor. If you are listening right now and you are not subscribed to the podcast, 
make sure that you subscribe to the Miraculous Mamas podcast. Follow us on Instagram and Twitter. And if you are loving these interviews and information, leave us a five-star rating and tell us what you are loving about the podcast. All right, without further ado, I'm going to begin the interview with Monet Hambrick. All right, everybody. I'm so excited for today's interview. I have Monet Hambrick here, and she's known as The Traveling Child on Instagram and her blog. And for everyone that knows me, I love to travel. I traveled all over while I was single. Um, And then everyone always said, get it out of your system now before you have kids, because then you can't do it anymore. And I always said, yes, I can, and I will. But so I'm I'm pregnant now with our first child, and... Um, we were planning a baby moon to Italy and it got canceled because of all the craziness. Oh, oh, sorry. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> but we can't get a refund. So we're like, we might have to go next year and the baby's going to be like nine months old. Like, how are we going to do this? And, and then I just realized, yeah, like I have zero idea how to travel <laughs> with the child because I've always just done it on my own. And then you do whatever you want, you know, when it's just you. So I'm super excited to talk to you about it because you are very experienced in this field. So thank you for coming on. Of course. No, thank you so much for having me. And it's funny you say that because I went to Italy when my eldest daughter was 15 months and I was 16 weeks pregnant oh, with wow. my youngest daughter. So it's 100% doable. Don't worry at all. Yeah. Even if you have to reschedule for next year, if you can't get the refund, which I'm really sorry because Italy seems to be one of the countries that is like, we're not letting anyone um, in for the rest of the year. So I hope that you can get a refund. I know. If not, <laughs> totally doable with kids. Yeah, no, that's reassuring to hear for sure. So how did you... Um... You know, I I mean, you, you kind of had the same thing told to you, like... Yeah. get this out of your system. And then basically, how did you start your blog and how did you guys decide to start? I mean, you, your first trip with your first daughter, she was like six weeks and you guys went to Columbia. So that, so my, so my first daughter, she was six weeks. We went to Florida, but with my second daughter, yes, she was 10 weeks and we went to Columbia. We oh, did okay. Cartagena and Medellin. Yeah. Columbia is amazing. So why would you not? But like most <laughs> people think they're like, you took a 10 week baby, a 10 week old baby to Columbia. Like, how does that even happen? Like, how does that work? Exactly. So, you know, for me, I started my, um, my blog and my Instagram honestly, because of a friend. So as you said, I was told the same thing. Like I grew up traveling. I was blessed that I got a scholarship in high school. I spent a summer in Botswana. I did study abroad in college. Like travel has always been through and through me, especially as a first generation American. You know, my family is Jamaican. So we, we went to Jamaica all the time from, you know, as soon as I was born. And that's what everyone said to me. Oh, you know, you're not going to be able to travel anymore. Like before they even said congratulations, they was like, <laughs> we know you do this just so you know, you can't do it anymore. And I was like, you clearly do not know me. I am the most like determined person ever. And funny enough, when I had my eldest daughter, yeah, we took her first trip. She was six weeks old. And I actually started this blog called The Adventures of M&J, which is Monet and Jordan. And I think I wrote like one post and then I was like, this is really dumb and no one cares. So I stopped. And like, we still travel, but I was like, who cares about this? And then when I had my second daughter, my friend who doesn't have kids had came over, it was right before we were going to Columbia. And she was like, you should really start an Instagram about your travels with your kids. And I was like, no, that's dumb. Like people, you know, for me, I was like, well, people are going to think that like, I'm being vain and just trying to show off like, oh, look at us doing this, you know, like, oh, we're on vacation all the time. And I'm, I'm just not like that. So I was like, ah, I'm dead. And she was like, no, like, honestly, Monet, I have seen you travel with Jordan and now adding Kennedy. And, you know, my girls are 21 months apart. So not a huge, you know, age difference. And she's like, I think it's so powerful because there are so many women and parents in general that really do think their travel life and honestly just life in general not necessarily ends but is going to be so different than what it was before and you read all these articles oh yeah make sure you travel while you're single make sure you travel before you have kids and she's like i see you still doing it with your kids and i see how it's affected 
Jordan and how articulate she is. And, you know, she's willing to try any types of food and all these things. And she was just like, I think you sharing that with other parents would be something that would be so amazing for them to see. And especially parents that want to do it and your family and your friends are telling you, you can't do that. That's not possible. And then you don't see anyone else doing it. So you really do think it's not possible. And she's like, now they can see someone else doing it. So you guys can all just be crazy together. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And it was like, oh, I thought about it. And I was like, okay, sure. And funny enough, at first, it wasn't even about my family. I was just posting random photos of other people's children's traveling. And then I was like, I want it to be personal. I want it to be more than just pictures. I want to provide the information on tips that we've learned along the way. Like, don't make the mistakes that we made. We already made them. So now here you here you are. Here's my example. Don't do the same thing. Your trip will be better. And just really providing an opportunity for parents to be able to easily plan trips. I'm type A super planner, so I love doing that stuff. But I know everyone doesn't. So providing all the itineraries for every trip that we go on. So if you don't know where to start, you can just go on there and have a full itinerary. And it's so nice when people like reach out and they're like, so I just came back from Costa Rica. We basically just did everything that you did in your blog post. Thank you so much. It was easy and fun. (laughs) So long story short, which clearly wasn't short, but that's how I started (laughs) the traveling child. No, that that's really good though. All right. We're going to take a quick break to talk about my favorite supplement brand, and that is Global Healing. It's a family-owned and operated company. All products are vegan, GMO-free, gluten-free, ethically sourced, packaged with recycled glass, and manufactured in one of the eco-friendliest facilities in the industry. Um, All the, the ingredients have been trusted for decades for purity and potency with no binders, fillers, or toxic compounds, which is so important and actually very hard to find. Uh, I talked to you guys a lot about their probiotics, which I've been using and absolutely love, and the Oxy powder as well, which is a great supplement to be taking um, that just helps you cleanse your body of impurities and toxins. Um, But I want to talk to you about two other products today. And the first one is the B12 Blend and Tri Blend. About 40% of Americans are deficient in B12. Uh, Some of the signs of that are fatigue, brain fog, memory loss, insomnia, and low libido. There are four types of B12. And Global Healing offers two natural and vegan formulas to help fit your lifestyle. There's the B12 Blend. Uh, and then the B12 Tri Blend, which is double the potency and containing um, three of the different B12 strands. And it's great for athletes and for those who want more advanced nutritional support. Um, Global Healings B12 supports a total well being. So your energy levels, metabolism, brain and mental health, immune system, cardiovascular health, uh, just such amazing products. And actually Vito just started taking that one. The other one I'm going to talk to you about is the Suntrex D3. About 1 billion people worldwide suffer from vitamin D deficiency. Uh, Some signs of that include mood swings, depression, lack of energy, getting sick easily and frequently, and bone and muscle pain. Global Healing Suntrex D3 is a liquid formula that provides high quality D3 that's been extracted from nutrient dense plants known as lichens. It's a vegan form of D3, the same form that as humans that we produce. So it's easily absorbed and nearly 300% more biologically active than vitamin D2, which is what you're going to find in a lot of other supplements. Suntrex D3 is a liquid formula with a sweet, mild flavor. Uh, It actually, I think it tastes really good. And uh, you use a dropper to make it easy to get a consistent serving every time. And it goes down easy and is quickly absorbed. And vitamin D3 is so important for immunity as well. So as soon as I got pregnant, um, I started taking D3 
three. And I recently just switched to the global healing and I absolutely love it because I know that I'm supporting my immune system and also supporting my baby's immune system as well. And as a new customer of global healing, you'll receive 15% off your first order when you use code mamas at checkout. Just go to globalhealing.com slash mamas and enter code mamas at the checkout for 15% off your first order. All products are backed by their year to love it guarantee. Love it or you can send your bottle back empty or full for a 100% refund. And they always offer free shipping in the United States and Canada. Let me know what products you are using and love. Now back to the show. When you were saying like the conversation you were having with your friend, I know for me, my biggest fear is having a kid, we're going to lose us. Mm-hmm. You know, and and I think it is because of the narrative that we're told. Everyone's like, well, yeah, you do. Like your yeah. whole relationship changes, your whole life changes. And I'm like, I love my life. <laughs> like, you know, so, and I'm like, I get exactly. that we have to make room for a child and that mm-hmm. I'm not going to sleep like I do right now when the baby's born. And And I understand that. Like I work as a birth doula, so I've, you know, I know a lot that goes into it and, um, but I feel like that's so important to be a part of that conversation to change change that narrative and to be like, no, you can keep, you know, like you guys still travel. For some people, they they don't go on dates in years. Mm-hmm. You know, it'll be like, oh, we haven't been in on a date in three years without the kids. And it's like, wow. Exactly. And that's something that's also important to me and you know, kind of how my blog has shifted where at first I did only talk about my travels with the family. So it was always involved with the kids, but I do travel outside of just with my kids and my husband, whether that's, you know, me and my husband making a commitment to do a trip, just us every year. Also me making a commitment to do a trip with just my girlfriends each year. And then also me doing a trip just by myself, a soul trip every year, just for myself, because it's true. It's so easy to lose yourself in marriage and motherhood and all these things. And, you know, you, you sacrifice all these things that you used to do because you have this new life. And of course, like sacrifices have to be made when you become a wife, when you become a mother, but that doesn't mean that you have to lose yourself in marriage or in motherhood. So I decided like to share that other side of my travels and just my life in general too, because, um, the more we talk about it as women and show people it's okay, the more women are going to know that it is okay also for you to still have a life outside of your kids. And when I posted about my first solo trip, just the feedback that I got from moms, like they were just like, oh my God, first of all, I need this in my life. Second of all, like I want to do this, but I feel so guilty because people are going to judge me. And there were people that judged me too. Like I had a message I went to Jamaica with my cousins one time, super last minute, literally on Christmas day, we bought these tickets and we went three days later. And while I was at the airport posting, like, I'm so excited, like, you know, going with my cousins, like we haven't hung out in forever like this. And it's like, um, where's your husband? Does your husband go on trips without you? And I was like, well, yeah, if he wants to, he can like, he can do that. And like, I don't think that we should be ashamed of one, not wanting to spend every single moment with our children because that's okay. Mm -hmm. And two, like we shouldn't feel guilty about doing things for ourselves too. Like I love to dive. So when we go on most of our family trips, like I don't really get to dive. Even when I go with my husband, he doesn't do snorkeling diving. Like he's not into that. So my, my solo trips are the time for me to literally do whatever I want to do whenever I want to do without having to worry about me compromising for anyone else. Mm-hmm. I go to sleep when I want to. I wake up when I want to. If I don't want to have a proper breakfast because I just want to lay in bed till 1 p.m., I can do that. Yeah. And I think it's important to share all of that. Um, and for moms and wives to know that while our lives do, I mean, honestly, they revolve around our families, that doesn't have to be all that there is. And we can still do those things that we love to do beforehand without feeling guilty about it. And if we can't take care of ourselves, how can we take care of our family? So like, that's just my time to refresh, rejuvenate, relax, all those things, and then come back to my family stronger. But I think the more women talk about that side of their lives, the more courage other women will have to do the same things and not feel that 
mom guilt that society, unfortunately, is always placing on us whenever we do anything for ourselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I know that's really hard. I was talking to a working mom the other day and she was so excited to go back to work and the flack that she got for that, like people being like, well, aren't you going to miss your kid? Aren't you going to whatever? And she's like, of course I miss my kid. I love my kids. And she's like, and there's days I don't miss them. Like I love being at work and then I get to come home to them and like, you know, that's okay. And we don't ask men the same questions. Never. Right. You're not like, didn't, didn't you miss, you went to work today. Didn't you miss your kids? Like, (laughs) you know, it just doesn't exist. But yeah, no, I mean, it's, I love that. I think that changing the conversation for sure and more people talking about it makes it, does give women the courage to do it. So I'd love to like dive into, um, traveling with your family. So, um, what, like when you first decided to do it and your girls are really little, like what were some of the disaster situations (laughs) where you're like, okay, so is this going to work? Is this not going to work? Like, how do we make traveling with our kids work? Mm -hmm. So biggest lesson I learned first off is one, like baby wearing through airports is just key. Like you want to be hands-free. There are so many things that you have to juggle and take care of and putting suitcases on the x-ray machine and all these things like being hands-free helps so much. So For us, like if we were traveling with a stroller, just realizing, okay, checking it at the ticket counter is just honestly easier if you can baby wear. Obviously, if your kids are older, then yeah, you want to do, you want to bring the stroller, even with traveling with car seats. Those things are heavy. Besides Mm -hmm. like the infant car seat, once you get to the convertible car seat, it is insane how heavy those things are. So investing in a car seat transporter, which also doubles as a stroller. So I'm able to like put child in there, strap them in, pull or push the car seat. And then I still have a hand free for luggage. I can have my back free, put a backpack on, um, those types of things. And one of the biggest disasters I had was just being distracted and definitely leaving, um, like Jordan had, it was actually on the way home from Italy. Jordan had a little backpack that she like wanted to wear. And then I saw I put her diapers and wipes in there. Got frazzled at the ticket, at the um, gate when it was time to get on the plane. Somehow she left the bag at the, at the gate. And we, you know, the flight was like eight hours. So I didn't have any diapers or wipes oh, no. on the plane. <laughs> and then when she like had a blowout, I had to like walk through the aisles looking for parents that had kids around the same age and beg someone if they would please give me a diaper and wipes. Um, so that was hilarious. Also learning that, you know, on international flights like that, if you have a non-ticketed lap infant, depending on the airline that you're on, read that as U.S.-based airline. Um no matter, even if the kid is almost two, they don't get a meal on the flight. So uh, be prepared for that um, and have extra food for them because, yeah, sharing the already small meal that yeah. everyone's provided with your child is not, it's not fun at all. But um, I mean, for younger kids, just like if you're nursing, nurse on takeoff and landing, that helps their ears tremendously. Mm. If you're not nursing, either giving a bottle or if they're older, having them chew on something, um, suck on ice, a lollipop, whatever the case may be, that helps so much with with their ears. Most times when kids are crying on planes, it's normally during takeoff and landing and it's because their ears are bothering them. So that's like key. Um, And if they're sleeping, then just let them sleep. Don't wake them up to do that because they'll just sleep through it just fine. But um Yeah. I mean, we do like different activities and I always raid either like the dollar section in Target or the dollar store for some new toys, wrap them up in wrapping paper because kids are like so entertained by unwrapping things. And (laughs) that in itself is a five minute activity and then the actual activity. So whether it's new stuff or old stuff, it definitely holds their attention um, a little bit longer and having various activities to change it up. Um, for them, but just being patient and realizing that most times, even if you are flustered, other people aren't really noticing what's going on, and like you're take you're being harder on yourself than anyone else is. And then if someone is nasty to you, 
you're probably just a nasty person in general yeah. and it didn't matter what you did. So <laughs> just brush it off and enjoy your time because everyone in the world was a child at one point. And there are definitely annoying adults that watch their shows on planes with no headphones and snore loudly mm-hmm. or do other things. So they'll get over it. <laughs> yeah, for sure. We are going to take a quick break from this episode to talk about another stressor that parents have. Um, And I want to give you a little trigger warning because we are going to talk about suffocation because over 2,000 babies die each year from suffocation. Rollovers are deadly and do happen. And being a parent is stressful enough. And you can't stay up all night worrying and watching the baby monitor uh, that to prevent fatal accidents. So now more than ever, getting a good night's sleep is crucial. And knowing that your child is safely asleep is one less thing that you can worry about um, with today's crazy world. And that is with the Newton baby mattress. It is so amazing. Um, Your baby can sleep on a fully breathable, washable, recyclable, two-stage Newton crib mattress. This is the only 100% washable crib mattress available on the market with every parent's dream. Independent tests have shown that a baby gets 97% more air while breathing through a Newton crib mattress than on a traditional crib mattress. It is Green Guard Gold certified and voted number one by leading pediatric experts and sleep coaches worldwide. They also have tons of five-star reviews on Amazon. It is the best baby mattress you'll find. And so Vito and I got one. What kind of led me to getting one too is reading that even the most popular mattress has a suffocation risk 17 times higher than the Newton. The Newton is such an amazing product. A lot of other mattresses contain latex, which can trigger allergies. Um, Also, they're not washable, so they can attract mold, bacteria, and dust mites. Um, So we got one, and I wanted to do a challenge to see if I could breathe on it. And I'm an extremely claustrophobic person, like really claustrophobic. I freak out if I'm like trying to take a shirt off and I get caught in it, I have a panic attack. So I'm like, okay, I have to test this mattress out to see if I can breathe on it. And I did. I laid face down on the mattress and I could still breathe. It is breathable. And I wanted to do that test to make sure that um, if my full body weight is on it and I can breathe through it, it gives me some ease knowing that my baby will be able to as well. The Newton Baby is also offering you guys $50 off your Newton crib mattress plus free shipping. Just go to newtonbaby.com and enter code MAMAS. You can also try 100 nights of sleep on Newton Baby. And if you're not happy, Newton offers free returns. Just go to newtonbaby.com. That's N E W T O N B A B Y.com and enter code MAMAS. That's Newton Baby, N E W T O N B A B Y dot com and enter code MAMAS for $50 off because it's 100% washable. This investment will actually save you money in the long run as you can pass it down from child to child and it will stay intact. And re- remember to go to newtonbaby.com, enter code MAMAS. Um, And rest assured that Newton Crib mattresses are 100% breathable, designed with breathe-through technology. And if you don't believe me, try the Breathe to Believe Challenge. It's hashtag breathe, the number two believe challenge. Uh, So many parents receive the mattress and talk about how the first thing they did was smush their face into it and take a deep breath and are amazed that they can actually breathe through it, Um, which I shared with you my story. For real, guys, (laughs) I'm an extremely claustrophobic person, so I didn't even want to do it. But it is breathable, and it's one less thing that Vito and I have to stress about, and we're so excited to be able to use this mattress with our baby that is on the way. I would love to hear your experience with it, so let me know how you love this mattress. Now, back to the episode. How do you deal with, I guess, time differences and sleep schedules? So for time differences, what we do is we, well, one, 
especially if we're going someplace like Europe from the United States, booking an overnight flight is ideal because you get on the plane, it's bedtime, they go to sleep, you wake up, it's morning time. So the adjustment for the time is a real easy transition for that. Um, for longer flights, like we've done Australia, Kenya, and Thailand, which were all like 20 plus hour mm-hmm. travel times, um, setting our clock um, for the local time when we're getting on the plane and trying to adjust from there. So depending on the age of your kids, you might want to do it for like a maybe like starting two days before your flight, but at least during the flight time. There's actually an app. I, I, I want to say it's Time Shifter. Um, and it will help you with that as well. Um, so basically if we get on the plane and we know, you know, it's, it might be 9 PM our time, but it's only 2 PM in the local destination trying to stay up until bedtime and then waking them up when it would be time for them to eat there, for them to nap there. That way their body is adjusting to that. Um, but then when you're getting at the destination, trying to keep it light the first day, have like fun activities for them if they're older, like definitely like involved, involve the park or something where they can burn off energy and get excited, something that they're excited about. They're more likely to stay up. Um, and then if they wake up in the middle of the night, just like laying with them, maybe giving them a little snack, but really just trying to get them back to bed um, so they can adjust to the time faster. But I find that younger kids are easier with time, mm-hmm. with the time shift, honestly, because Normally, they nap and wake up and eat all day long anyway, so it's really not that much different for them. And then they're easy because you can just put them in a carrier or put them in a shoulder, and they just nap whenever they want to. So I find when they get older, that's when it gets harder. Um, That's also when they can speak to you too and kind of tell you how they're feeling, so it's a little bit easier, and you can kind of start that time shift ahead of time. But definitely setting the time for the local time as soon as we get on the plane and interacting, well, I guess living our normal daily life on the plane as if it was that local time helps a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, long flights are hard on adults, you know, (laughs) so it's, it's definitely a lot. Um, so one thing I know that I used to get asked all the time when I travel is how can you afford this? Like people would ask me, like, how do you afford to go everywhere? But I mean, at the time I was single, I didn't have a lot of commitment and that was a priority in my life. So that's what I saved money to go do. Instead of like buying new shoes, I would save up for a plane ticket, you yeah, know? Exactly. So yeah. that was like a priority for me. And, um, but now like we have a mortgage and I feel like more of an adult (laughs) than I ever have in my life. So, you know, obviously for the majority of people, the money is what stops them. Do you have like some tips on how to travel on a budget or how to save to, to do these vacations? So just like you said, when you were single, it was a priority. So you made adjustments. It's the same thing for families. So for us, Traveling is a priority. So we make a lot of sacrifices to be able to put that money into travel. So for instance, we don't have cable. So we cut off our cable like two and a half years ago and it saves us about $100 a month. And that $100 a month adds up to $1,200 a year. Mm -hmm. We're fine with just Netflix and Hulu. So that saves us so much money. Um, Also, we really do not eat out. And I know eating out is a very large budget for a lot of families. We're really big on cooking at home when we're home because then when we're traveling, we want to be able to eat out. So we do that. Also, when we are traveling, a lot of times to cut back on food costs, we will stay at an Airbnb where we're able to make a few meals. So whether that's making breakfast every single day or that is being able to stop at the grocery store and pick up some quick little things to make that we can carry out and have lunch quickly, or even just making food for kids. Like for us, we find that like my husband and I, like we can do breakfast and then like four or five hours later have lunch and then like four hours later have dinner. But the kids are like breakfast and then in an hour they want food. So 
buying snacks. That way we can give them snacks and hold them over for a bigger meal um, later on in the day where we can, we can save on that. Another thing is we have a savings account specifically for travel. So separating that from everything else um, and putting a set amount of money into there every single month. That way, when we have a flight deal that comes up, which is the only way we travel, um, we're able to know we have that cash. So a f- flight deals is basically how, how we travel. Uh, now with my blog being bigger, we do get sponsored you know, trips sometimes when we're working with brands. So that's something separate, but for everything else, if it's not a flight deal, we're not going. So before we used to, you know, you're like, oh yeah. Like I remember for my husband and I's first year anniversary, we went to Japan and was like, we want to go to Japan and we're going to Japan during this time. And the tickets were what the tickets cost. And it was cool then, but now it's like, no. So all of our travel is based on flight deals. So for instance, for my husband's 30th, 30th birthday, he's always wanted to go to Amsterdam. So this deal came up for Amsterdam it was $200 round trip on Delta Airlines, oh okay? Oh, my gosh. So his birthday is July 13th, but the flight deal started August 4th. So it was like August 4th through like August 24th. Anytime flying during those dates, it was $200. So a lot of people's thought process, honestly, is like, oh, well, my husband's birthday is July 13th. The tickets are $1,200 per person. We're going for his birthday, so we're going July 13th. My thought process is you can celebrate your birthday three weeks later because we're going for $200 <laughs> right. per person, you know? So with flight deals, you have to basically be flexible with the date that you're traveling or the destination. If you have a specific destination and a specific date in mind, it is very hard to find deals. But if you have a spe- you, if you just don't care when you go somewhere, then you can go super cheap. Like when I went to Australia, I had no intention of going to Australia that year. I thought that like Australia would be later because Australia is like $1,800 from the United States to get a ticket there. But there was a flight deal for $560. Me and 12 of my girlfriends and my eight month old (laughs) at the time, Kennedy went (laughs) and it was like $560 to go to Australia. Like that is insane. So it was like, it wasn't on the plan, but we, we went ahead and went then. Um, and with families, a lot of things, like questions I'll get is like, like people like think that we homeschool, but my daughter goes to public, like my older daughter goes to public school and they'll be like, oh yeah, but it's easy to find deals when you can travel whenever. And I'm like, no, my daughter's in public school. So like we, we do allow her to miss some school to travel, but no more than two weeks. And for the past two years, we've had amazing spring break deals. So last year we went to Brazil, went to Rio de Janeiro for her spring break. For spring break, the tickets, they had a a flight deal for $303 round trip. So there are definitely deals during summer. There are deals during winter break, during spring break, during when kids are out of school. You just have to be flexible. Mm -hmm. Um, So some of the websites that we find flight deals are on are theflightdeal.com secretflying.com. Um, and then my, one of my favorite websites is Skyscanner. So mm-hmm. if you, with Skyscanner, it le- lets you search. So if you have specific dates that you have to travel, whether that's because of spring break or the only time you can get off of work, you can put your home airport and then you can put the dates that you can travel. And then for the destination, you literally select everywhere And then it will show you the cheapest places to go from your home airport during those dates. Or if you're like, I really want to go here, X, Y, Z, say Bali or who knows, wherever. But you can go whenever. You can put your home airport and then the airport, the the destination you want to go to, and then search the cheapest month. And it will tell you when the cheapest time to go to that destination is. So it will find the flight deal for you. So using those types of things is really how we're able to afford um, travel. And then also where we do a little bit of credit card hacking with, with miles and points. Mm-hmm. So signing up for credit cards to get the sign up bonus. Um, that's how we went to Thailand. We had gotten the Chase Sapphire Reserve at the time. Um, and the sign up bonus gave us enough points to get all four of our tickets to Thailand plus three nights 
hotel in one of the cities that we stayed in because we coupled using our points with a flight deal. Um, And interesting enough for that flight deal, another way to save is sometimes flying into nearby airports is cheaper. So we were going to Thailand. That was like our end goal. And the flight deals from Miami weren't that great to Thailand, but it ended up being a flight deal to Singapore. So we used the, we got the flight deal to Singapore, used our points and miles to book that flight. And then realizing, so from Singapore to Thailand, not only is it a super fast flight, it was like an hour flight, maybe from Singapore to Phuket. The flights are also like $30 per person. So we used that flight deal. We went, we uh, had a layover in Singapore, then went on to Thailand. And then on the way back, we booked our flight from Thailand to Singapore, where we would have a whole day in Singapore. And then we also got to explore Singapore all for one low price. So a lot of tracking and things like that, but there are definitely lots of ways to be able to plan affordable trips with your family. We always look on Groupon or TravelZoo too when we're in the destination so we can find deals on restaurants or activities, like constantly just finding... Um, those t- those types of opportunities um, to save on the things that we're also going to be doing in the destination. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, for sure. That makes sense. I feel like there is a lot of work that goes into it, but mm-hmm. um, but it is worth it. Like I've I've done. I I mean, since I haven't like we didn't go anywhere really this last year, but because we were planning on Italy, <laughs> but. Um, but I remember like doing that, like going down and like writing down, okay, well, if I book a layover to this place or I book it here, like I used to, I work better if I write things down. So like writing down like the different <laughs> patterns and whatever and figuring out what's cheaper and what's, you know, whatever works. And, but it is fun though. I mean, it's something that, that I think is fun, you know, so I know it might not be the most convenient thing for some people, but if it, affords you to be able to go and save money and, you know, have an extra experience while you're there or whatever it is, it's totally worth it. Yes, it is. (laughs) All right. We're going to take a quick break to talk about something that maybe not everyone has thought to do yet because it's definitely something that Vito and I a little while ago was like, oh crap, we need to get some life insurance (laughs) and shopping for life insurance can raise a lot of questions. How much coverage do you need? Which insurance company is the best for you? How much should it even cost? And at a time when it's more important than ever to have life insurance, the pandemic is making it a little more complicated to shop for it. And that is where Policy Genius can help. It's a life insurance marketplace backed by a team of experts. Policy Genius is keeping track of all the changes in the market so you don't have to. They'll find the right amount of coverage at the best possible price without the headache. Policy Genius compares quotes from the top life insurance companies in one place. It takes just a few minutes to compare quotes from the top insurers to find your best price. And this doesn't just save a lot of legwork. You could save $1,500 or more a year using Policy Genius to compare life insurance policies. So once you apply, the Policy Genius team will handle all the paperwork and red tape for free. So if you hit any speed bumps during the application process, they will be there to take care of everything. So if you need life insurance, but you're not sure where to start, head to policygenius.com. Policy Genius will find you the best rate and handle the process completely. They'll get you and your family protected and hopefully give you one less thing to worry about. Try it today. Now back to the episode. So I was going to ask about your girls too, because you said a lot of people assume that they're homeschooled then. Um, And since you guys do travel a lot, yeah, you would think that they're missing tons of school, but you said it's only like two weeks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Kennedy is just turned four. So she does stay home with me. Um, I guess we do like pre, I, I definitely teach her things, but we're not like complete homeschoolers because I want her to learn things for, you know, when she goes to kindergarten that she's ready. But um, Jordan, yeah, she's in kindergarten and she did VPK last year and VPK in Florida is very strict. They have the same attention. 
uh, as a regular public school. So yeah, we're okay with missing about two weeks. So a lot of our travel when it's during the school year, it is around for school holidays. So I also have like a blog post on how to travel frequently with a full-time job. Um, And we kind of follow the same guidelines for school for her. So if it's Labor Day weekend and we know she's going to have Monday off of school, maybe adding that Friday before and, you know, leaving Thursday after school, elementary school gets out at like two, her school gets out at two o'clock. So we can have a later flight on Thursday and then she only misses Friday, but then we get a four day vacation. Um, Same thing, like thankfully this year, well, who knows with everything going on, yeah. we'll be able to only work for Thanksgiving this year. But this year, her school just changed it where they're actually off the entire week of Thanksgiving. But last year, um, we went to Morocco for Thanksgiving and she didn't have school Wednesday, Thursday or Friday. So we took her out of school Monday and Tuesday. But realistically, like they're not doing that much on that Monday and right. Tuesday anyway. <laughs> so that that taking her out for those two days allowed us to have nine days worth of time to go on a trip. Um, and whenever we do take them out for school, like when we take Bruno out, I always talk to her teachers beforehand, making sure that, you know, that time frame is good, getting any schoolwork that she's going to miss ahead of time, if possible. I completely understand that teachers are like so busy and it's not always possible for them to like cater to you and do these things. But hey, if I ask and they and they can do it, we do that and then, on the flight, she's working on it. Or in the evenings when we get back from sightseeing, she does, you know, whatever she's missing from school. But honestly, like a model that another model that we kind of live by is the world is your classroom. And on so many of these trips, they are learning so much and getting that real firsthand experience um, that it's educational for them too. So even with only missing two weeks, like there's a lot that you can stretch that out to. Um so, yeah. Yeah. Well, and I know that you also uh, do some blogs on just like keeping your kids busy and activities and mm-hmm. things like that. And I know right now is a time when, I mean, a lot of people don't homeschool and aren't um, used to having to e-learn and do all of that, but you seem to have a lot of good resources and things for your kids. Can you share some of that with us? Yeah. So thankfully Jordan is mostly set because her school is doing virtual learning. Um, But we're always looking for other things to engage her throughout the rest of the day, especially like my husband and I are working and she finishes her stuff at one o'clock, like for those next four hours, we need her to do something until like we're done for the day. Um, so some of my favorite things, um, well, for her just in general, like she knew already knew how to read going into kindergarten. Um, and she currently reads at like almost a third grade level. So hooked on phonics was something that my parents actually did for me and my brother growing up. And it's how I learned to read. And it's how we taught her to read and currently doing with my four-year-old Kennedy. We started her when she was about three and a half. Um, So that's something that we do in the house daily really helps with learning like the sounds of letters and then learning how to put that together to make words. It also helps with then spelling too, because they understand the phonics to able to sound words out. Um, so that's, we do that for um, reading weekly, every single, pretty much every day with Kennedy most times. And then ABC Mouse is also something that we use, which is great um, because it does science, reading, math. So it's for kids from two to eight years old. And then they have Adventure Academy, which is made by the same company, but for kids like eight to 13. Obviously haven't used that one, but We've used ABC Mouse for like the past. So we started it when Kennedy was two. And I will say like when she was two, like her attention span wasn't high enough for it. Like yeah. we tried it and it it really didn't, it, it really didn't work. But when she turned three, we started using it again and she loves it. Like she'll be like, oh, can I go on ABC Mouse? Because it's learning, but it's also fun and interactive and they have, different types of learning, whether it's puzzles or games or reading. And like, they'll read the books to the kids, which is also very helpful during this time because 
we just can't do that all the time. Um, so that's helpful. We also have like tons of like just learning fun activities. So like for Jordan, when she was learning to read, um, there's this thing called sight word bingo. Um, so playing bingo, but it's with sight words and the company that makes it, like, if you just look on Amazon, um, if you type in sight word bingo, you'll see that, but then you can click on the maker and you'll see all the other ones they make it for the alphabet, for addition, for subtraction, for letters, numbers, even Spanish, like anything that you could possibly think of, um, doing that. And then there's this, there are two resources that we use pretty much, uh, daily to Miss Monica, on YouTube. It's Monica J. Sutton, and she's an early education uh, teacher. She's been in early education for 18 years, and she does a circle time for toddlers. And every day, like she goes over the days of the week, and then there's a, a number of the week, a letter of the week, and a shape of the week that she goes over. She goes over like weather and kids understanding like what do you wear if the weather is however it is outside. And Kennedy absolutely loves that. Like we put it on every morning. It gives me time to make breakfast uninterrupted. Um, and then for like older kids, well, not that much older, but um, before Jordan started doing virtual school, before they got that together, um, Miss Megan's kindergarten camp on Facebook is a kindergarten teacher who offers um, free lessons online. So it's an hour live. And then if you missed the live, you can just watch it later. Um, but it's great because she goes over so many things with the kids and like gives them lessons. Um, so even if you have a child that's going into kindergarten, it's great for them too. Um, so that's really nice. Um, but yeah, I have like a blog post going over like all the things that we do with the kids at home. And a lot of times those are things that we do with them when we're on the road too. So if we're traveling, like they can do ABC mouse and, you know, on the app or hooked on phonics on the app too, just so. They're continuously learning too, and they're not just watching movies like if you go on a road trip for the entire road trip. Mm -hmm. uh, so those are some of our favorites in the house. Yeah, right now. you gave a lot of good resources. And also, I know you have tons of it on your Instagram as well. Um, yes. On the Traveling Child, you have a lot of the stuff up there and a link to your blog. Um, yes. And I love your guys's the motto, if children live there, you can travel there. Cause there's so many destinations where they're like, well, I can't take my kids there. And it's like, kids already live there. <laughs> it makes <Exactly>. sense. <laughs> it does. It like makes sense. Like people are always asking us like, is such and such kid friendly? And I'm like, yeah, kids live there. Like there has to be something that these parents do with their kids. Like it is okay. Even like I mean, one of our favorite places to go as a family is Vegas. And people are always like, Love oh, Vegas. my God, you go to Vegas? And then you take your kids there? And I'm like, yes. Vegas is so kid-friendly. Like, people think of Vegas and they think of the Strip. Mm -hmm. The Strip is, like, however long it is. I don't know, two miles. I don't know. However long it is, and that's it. And then there's so much more outside of that. So, like, getting off of the Strip and just, like, not, like the parks, like Red Rock Canyon and, mm -hmm. like, doing that. Like we did the first time I went there with my, with my um, older daughter, like we did that. And then even just an hour away, there's a uh, Valley of Fire State Park, which is absolutely gorgeous. And there is a, a old gold mine that you can go to. And there's like so many outdoor activities from like canoeing and like all these things that you can do, like any, literally any place like that you've any place that you think of kids can go there. Like, obviously we're not taking our kids to places that are in the middle of war. Like, yes, right. I know kids do there too. Like we're not going to those places, but like a lot of the places that people like gawk at the thought of bringing kids are honestly some of like the most kid friendly places. Like Thailand is yeah. so kid friendly. Literally every restaurant that you go to, they have specific flatware for kids with like cartoon characters on there like cater to families so much and kids just like making sure that they're okay. Like when we went there, our tour guide, first of all, like, I don't think I watched the kids the entire time we were on <laughs> this tour. With, like literally the tour guide, like watched the kids the entire time. Like everything he was like, no, no, it's okay. I got it. Like we want you to enjoy your time. Like, don't worry. We'll make sure the kids are having a good time too. Like we're all together. No, you don't worry about that. Like every, like there are a lot of places. Like I feel like in America, Families, unfortunately, are not valued as high as in other places. In other places, like, families are valued so high. So, like, 
kids are welcome everywhere in other countries where sometimes in America, like if you're at a certain location, people look at you like, why would you bring your kid here? And in other countries, people are like, children are the future. Like they're such an important part of our families and we bring them everywhere and we do everything with them. So no one gets upset if your child is crying at a restaurant and giving you weird stares, especially like if you're nursing, like no one cares, right. no one is judging you. Like, like the whole like normalized breastfeeding that goes on in the United States, like that. You're like, it's not, normal it's, everywhere else. It's actually normal. <laughs> it's actually normal. Like no one is concerned on what you're doing to feed your child. So yeah, your kids can go anywhere mm-hmm. that you want. <laughs> Yeah, no, I love that. I've been to Thailand a couple of times and that's actually where we went on our honeymoon last year. And when we were there, we were just talking about how like you see so many families traveling there because it's such a safe place. People, I I think people also, they fear what they don't know, right? So you think it's like, oh, a third world country or second world country, there's danger, there's whatever. And it's like, I live in Chicago. Like it's pretty dangerous here. (laughs) So, and and I don't- Right. And it's like, and I don't worry, like I'm not going to the grocery store worried, you know? And, and so it's, you, obviously there's always certain neighborhoods and places anywhere you go that you want to avoid. And you're most likely as a tourist, not going to end up in those areas. So it's like in Thailand, I feel like it's, I I always say I want to take my kids there because it's, I always see families there. It's so family friendly. Um, I always see families there, people baby wearing and whatever. And it's just, it's a normal thing there. So, and, and I'm sure it is most places. Yeah, for sure. Well, thank you so much for coming on. I know we went over tons of stuff and you shared so much information with us. Um, tons of good resources. Um, I know I mentioned it earlier, but where can people find, follow you, check you out at Yes. Thank you so much for having me. So on Instagram, our um, handle is the traveling child. And then our website is the traveling co. And then we're also on Facebook and it's the traveling child on Facebook as well. Yeah. So if you guys need some inspir- travel inspiration, definitely go there. And if you're talking to like, like one last question, I guess, how do you convince like your partner? Like if they're like, there's no way we can travel with kids. There's no way we could go there. Like, do you have any tips for like, if one person's like, I really want to do it. And the other person's like, we can't. (laughs) I would say like one, find examples and show them like, look how much this fun these people are having. And is it perfect? No. Like I I do not want to paint a picture in your head that is perfect. Listen, your kids throw temper tantrums at home. They will throw temper tantrums wherever you're traveling. But think about it, like the beach in Thailand, temper tantrum versus like temper tantrum in your living room. Which one do you prefer? Right. Um, True. Um, and honestly, like not to stir the pot a little bit, but realistically also if they don't want to go to sometimes like if that's just not their thing, like think about going on your own. Like I've gone multiple places with the girls by myself, more so because my husband just didn't have as many vacation days as I did. <laughs> um, but like another thing I've learned is like just not letting people hold me back. And obviously that's a conversation you have to have with your partner to make sure they're comfortable with you going with your child, um, alone. But it's something that's also nice, just like bonding experience too, to be able to do that. Like for me, for instance, I do a solo trip with each of my daughters every year, just me and one of them alone, because they're both at high needs age and they both have different, um, interests. And it's a time that we get to go and enjoy ourselves and do whatever my child wants to do with no compromising and worrying about what their sister wants to do. So worst case, it might be like nice bonding time with you and your child. But, um, I would say just like, I think if you have a plan, especially like if you have itinerary already set and like can provide them with examples of how much fun they're going to have and like how much research you've done and you're not just like going to go out there on you know, a wing, I think that would probably be very helpful to help them visualize all the fun and excitement that you guys can have while showing that you have a plan in place. Mm-hmm. No, that's good advice. Uh, thank you again so much for taking the time to come on here and everybody go follow her at The Traveling Child. And um, I look forward to everyone hearing this episode and looking at more inspiration on your page. Thank you so much. Yeah. Have a good day. Me too. It's so fun talking to her because I feel truly inspired. I've 
always enjoyed traveling and obviously it's been really easy doing it on my own. Um, adding a kid to the mix is a little bit scary. I mean, as of right now, I don't even know how to not travel and just keep a kid (laughs) functioning. I've never done it before. I've never had somebody else completely rely on me like this. So, uh, I'm sure I'll need to adjust to that before I book any trips and then also see what's going on in the world and, and all of that. But, uh, she was just so much fun to talk to. Definitely follow their Instagram page because it's just so cool. The trips that they take and, um, seeing their family have so much fun is awesome. So that's the traveling child. Check them out. And again, make sure that you guys are following along, um, on our Instagram on our Instagram and in our Facebook group, join the Miraculous Mamas Facebook group. The group of women there are absolutely amazing. I love them so much and they are such a good time. So uh, make sure that you join that community of women to continue to learn and grow with us and ask any questions that you feel that you need to ask in there as well. I hope you guys are staying safe and healthy and I will talk to you next week. Bye. Bye.